May 13th, 2003. Live, direct from Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, an Atlas V rocket stands gleaming in the lights, ready to become the first to carry a Greek satellite into the heavens. So join us now as we share a front row seat to the continuation of a legacy of success called Atlas. You are looking at an Atlas V rocket, poised and ready for flight on Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. As we count down to the launch of the Hellasat satellite, the first spacecraft to be launched for the countries of Greece and Cyprus. Well, good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Barbie, joining you live from the International Launch Services and Lockheed Martin Atlas Space Flight Operations Center, or ASOC. Today, an Atlas V rocket will carry the Hellasat communications satellite into orbit above Greece and help bring the 2004 Olympics telecast from Greece into homes around the world. The Atlas V rocket has just completed its fueling operations. Pre-launch activities are continuing towards an on-time liftoff. Throughout the countdown and Hellasat flight, we'll be going to Atlas V Mission Control and launch commentator Don Spencer for updates on the vehicle and the status of the mission. Well, let's take this opportunity now to join Don Spencer for an update on the processing leading up to the launch. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 14 minutes, 29 seconds and counting. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. We're very pleased to have you with us for this mission. The Atlas team is undergoing final preparations for the flight of the second Atlas V rocket, AV-002. Liftoff is scheduled from Complex 41 at 5.57 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 7.57 Greenwich Mean Time. We have a 34-minute launch window this evening, which extends to 6.31 p.m. Eastern, 18.31 Greenwich Mean Time. Currently, the launch vehicle, spacecraft, ground systems, range and weather are all in go status, and the weather, in fact, is a 0% probability of violating constraints, so we're looking very good with the weather, and there are no technical issues that are in work at this time. So uh, everything's going very well at this time, and we'll continue to report back to you periodically through the broadcast. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus 13 minutes, 38 seconds, and counting. Now that we know what's happening with the launch, let's turn our attention to an event that happened here yesterday at the ASOC. It was a moment you don't see here very often in aerospace. One of the ceremonies of the ancient Greeks was to bestow a blessing on the departing vessel for good luck. Yesterday, such a blessing ceremony was held. Most of the blessing was in Greek, but a short portion of the blessing was in English, and our cameras were there to capture this historic event. Almighty God, in wisdom you made fast the firmament and set the earth secure on its foundation. You take provident care of for the entire universe. You also have regard, O Lord, for this satellite which will be launched tomorrow. Guide its course for orbit so that led by your Holy Spirit and guided by your holy angels, it may journey well to its destination and be delivered from any impending obstacles. Bless the people who will guide its transmissions so that through it they may bring your glory and honor and to the viewers give health and prosperity. For we dedicate all that is before us to you, O Lord, and we undertake all things in your holy name. For you are the way, the truth, and the life, and to you do we ascribe glory and thanksgiving with your only begotten Son, together with your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, 
both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Κλείνον κύριε το ουσού και επάκουσον ημών. Ο Ιωρδάνη βαπτιστή είναι κατά δεξάμενο και αγιά σα τα είδατα και ευλόγησαν πάντα σε εμά. Και κατά αξίωσον ημά εμπληστήνε του αγιασμού σου δια του είδατο τούτου με τα λήψη ω τα κεραντισμού. Και εδώ γενέστε τούτο το είδο βοηθών, ει υγεία ψυχήστε και σώματο και ει ευόδοση του έργου του συνδεωμένου με τον υποεκτόξευση δορυφόρων. Σίγαρη ο αγιασμό των ψυχών και των σωμάτων ημών, ο δημιουργό παντό καλού και εσύ την δόξαν και ευχαριστίαν και προσκύνηση αναπέμπομεν. Συν το ανάρχο σου πατρί και το παναγίο και αγαθό και ζωπιό σου πνεύματι, νυν και αη και ει του αιώνα των αιώνων. Σώσον Κύριε των λαών Σου και ευλογήσον την κληρονομία Σου νύχας της βασιλεύσης κατά βαρβάρων δωρούμενος και τόσον φυλάτων διά του σταυρού Σου πολιτεύμα. Now let's check in once again with launch commentator Don Spencer to find out how pre-launch activities are continuing with the rocket. This is Atlas Mission Control, T minus nine minutes, 54 seconds and counting. And uh, as you know, the Atlas V uh, launch team uh, was originally scheduled to launch this mission yesterday. We were postponed. Uh, due to a vehicle instrumentation uh, anomaly, and that problem was worked overnight. The component was replaced on the vehicle, and the testing was completed with a flight review conducted this morning. So we're uh, back here ready to go. Things are going very well today. We don't have any issues in work, as I mentioned. Weather is just about perfect. We uh, always hate to say perfect, but 0% uh, probability of violating constraints is what uh, has been predicted. And uh, uh, as we mentioned, the processing is well underway. This morning, the vehicle was rolled to the pad beginning at about 8.30 this morning. The uh, MLP transport began, and uh, the vehicle has been secured at the pad, and the propellant loading process got underway just uh, about an hour and a half to two hours ago, and it's well underway. The vehicles are loaded, and they're continuing at the top with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen propellants at this time. So uh, we'll continue to update you. Everything is going well with the countdown at this time. This is Atlas Mission Control at two minus eight minutes, 48 seconds and counting. That was launch commentator Don Spencer in Mission Control. Earlier, we were able to talk with Jim Bonner, program director for ILS, about the importance of an accurate flight. Why is orbit accuracy so important in a launch? And this is important to our customer because it minimizes the amount of fuel that the spacecraft will have to expend to attain its final orbit. And by minimizing the amount of fuel that it has to expend to get to orbit, this means that it has more fuel on orbit to do its primary mission, which is to serve its customers. So this translates into a, a greater orbital maneuver life which is what the customer is looking for. It provides a, a greater period of time that they can generate revenue. And that was Jim Bonner, Program Director for International Launch Services. As is the case with every mission, the launch vehicle has a specific role to play and a specific flight path to follow. While we have a few extra minutes, let's preview today's mission in this Atlas V mission profile video. The following profile details the important events of the mission using Six, approximate times. Five, four, three, 
two, one. And lift off. The Atlas RD 180 engine fires to lift the vehicle away from the pad. Shortly after liftoff, Atlas begins its initial roll and pitch maneuvers to attain the proper ascent profile. This will minimize aerodynamic loads. After clearing the pad, the RD-180 engine is throttled up from 74 to 92%. 33 seconds into flight, the RD-180 engine is throttled down. After passing through the sound barrier, 65 seconds into flight, the RD-180 is throttled up to the cruise setting. Upon reaching 4 Gs, the RD-180 begins a ramp throttle to 5 Gs, where the engine will maintain constant acceleration. 11 seconds before booster engine cutoff, the RD-180 is throttled down to maintain 4.6 Gs burning propellant at a rate of more than 1,300 pounds per second. The Atlas is nearly 62 miles in altitude, 137 miles downrange, and traveling at a speed of almost 11,000 miles per hour. Booster engine cutoff occurs four minutes into flight. After eight seconds, the booster section is jettisoned. MES-1 takes place at four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Eight seconds after Centaur main engine start, the payload pairing is jettisoned. Centaur and its payload are now in first burn, the longer of the two Centaur firings. This 10 and a half minute burn will inject the vehicle into a slightly elliptical parking orbit. After first burn, main engine cutoff, Nico 1 Centaur, with its spacecraft, enters a coast period of around nine minutes. At a guidance calculated start time, just north of the equator, the Centaur's main engines are reignited to burn for about four minutes and 28 seconds until guidance commanded shutdown. After Centaur's second burn main engine cutoff, Miko 2, the Centaur provides the required separation spin up and specific pointing attitude. Separation of the spacecraft will occur two minutes and 49 seconds after Miko 2. We have spacecraft separation. Both requires us to get satisfactory separation of the spacecraft. We are rapidly approaching a planned 10-minute hold. Let's listen to launch commentator Don Spencer, who is sitting in the spacecraft area behind the launch control center of the ASOC for an update on how the countdown is proceeding. So for the remainder of the day... This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding. We've just entered a planned 10-minute hold. And right now there is a weather briefing in progress, but we're hearing the same thing that we've heard pretty much all day that the weather looks fantastic. There's really no clouds. Um, the only concern we'd had in the previous day or two building up to uh, today's attempt was the possibility of cumulus clouds, but we have no concern with the weather, 0% probability of violating uh, the constraints. So we're looking good. We're not working any issues in ground systems, spacecraft, and launch vehicle weather are all in a go status at this time. Propellant transfer process has been complete. Uh, topping is underway and uh, all the testing is continuing as planned for liftoff on schedule at 5.57 p.m. Eastern. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus four minutes and holding. Now that we have learned about the profile for this mission for today's launch, let's turn our attention to the guest of honor. Earlier, I had a chance to speak with Dr. Christakis Filas, the Helisat Mission Director. He shared these comments along with a video on the program and the spacecraft known as Helisat. This is the first commercial satellite launch for Greece and Cyprus. Describe for us the significance of this mission. It's uh, significant uh, because it's the first major project combined between Greece and Cyprus, United Project. And uh, that is the cooperation has been um, uh, 
very good and it must be the start of uh, a lot more cooperation now that Cyprus joined the European Union. It also has a lot of commercial impact because um, with Greece having its own satellite system, it will make um, the Greek industry, will give the communication industry in Greece a lot of uh, uplifting. Uh, OT, the Greek uh, telecommunications company, is the dominant commu uh, telecommunications force in the Balkans. And uh, that satellite will provide the backbone of the communications for uh, the first part of the century, for the next 15 years. And we hope that uh, also it will play a part in the Olympic Games. So we are really proud that Greece will have its own satellite system. And uh, this is really the, a big achievement. We've worked very hard for the last 10 years for this. We've worked and worked very hard and uh, it's about to happen. Space, the final frontier. The challenge for man to explore space began since the dawn of human civilization. During ancient times, constellations, the sun, the moon, Mars and other planets of our solar system were worshipped as gods, but also became objects for higher philosophy and astronomy studies. Ancient Greek philosophers and astronomers were among the first scientists to study our universe and create the foundations of space exploration. From space, we can build bridges to every corner of our planet. Space communications allow us to convey ideas and thoughts and propagate information and elements of culture. Advancing through the 21st century, Hellasat establishes a dynamic presence in space with the operation of its first communications satellite. A Eurostar E2000 Plus platform manufactured by Astrium and launched using an Atlas V 401G launch vehicle from ILS. Hellasat Satellite, the Greek presence in space. The Hellasat company, a subsidiary of Hellenic telecommunications organization OTE, with strategic partners from Greece and Cyprus, will manage and operate Hellasat from two ground control centers in both countries. The operation of the satellite will further strengthen the strategic, technological, educational, cultural and financial goals set by these two European countries which share long historical ties. Hellasat satellite will provide telecommunication services for the coverage of the Athens 2004 Olympic Games along with OTE, the exclusive carrier of the Games. In addition, ethnic groups in Europe as well as countries neighboring Greece, especially the Balkan states, are expected to make extensive use of Hellasat. Located at the geostationary orbital position of 39 degrees east, 36,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface, Hellasat covers with its two fixed and two steerable beams Europe, Africa, Asia and the Middle East through 30 KU band transponders. The advanced technology, flexibility and high power of Hellasat offers a considerable number of broadcasting companies and telecom operators satellite capacity for the provision of a variety of services such as direct to home services, video contribution and distribution, point to point telecommunication services, corporate, public and private VSAT networks, high-speed internet and multimedia services, teleeducation, telemedicine and other public welfare services. Our vision is to develop the orbital position of 39 degrees east into a crossroads of culture in space. Hellasat, bridging cultures from space. Welcome back to the live broadcast of the Atlas V and Hellasat launch. I'm Jennifer Barbie reporting from Cape Canaveral, Florida. We are currently in a planned 10 minute hold. In just a few minutes, we'll go back to launch commentator Don Spencer for the official polling of the mission management team. The weather here in Florida continues to look positive for an on-time liftoff and all systems on the rocket are performing as expected. Well, earlier, I had an opportunity to talk with Mr. Philippe Labor, program manager for the Astrium-built Hellasat spacecraft. 
Astrium, one of the world's leading spacecraft manufacturing companies, has a bright future. Here's more. Astrium built satellite to fly on board Atlas. Tell us about your experiences working here at the cave. Uh, you, you are right. It's uh, the fourth experience that you have here uh, in Cape. We have already launched uh, two Hubbard satellites for uh, Utelsat and one Orion satellite. Uh, it's uh, well, well, the first time that we launch a Eurostar satellite on uh, an Atlas V, uh, and it will be this year. Uh, we'll have also another launch next year for uh, Hindmarsat as well, again at Atlas V. But the countdown clock is rapidly ticking down to the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's return now to our launch commentator, Don Spencer, who will take us through the rest of the launch countdown. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding, and the polling is underway right now. Let's listen in to the launch team polling. channel 20. This range coordinator on 20. What's your estimate on the uh, green board on the range? We do not have an estimate. There's one boat in the box and another one moving into the area, so we will not be able to pick up the count. Roger, you don't see us making our coming out in one minute? This is Atlas Mission Roger. Control, T minus four minutes and holding, and the range has gone red. They have uh, an issue with boats that have entered the launch danger area. There's an area that's uh, just downrange from the launch vehicle that needs to be clear of any aircraft and boats. Uh, it's a safety concern. And they have one boat that has entered the area, another boat that is, uh, appears to be entering the area, and they're in the process of uh, moving those boats out of the area. And uh, there's uh, range support, Air Force support that uh, is involved in Coast Guard support with the boats that uh, um, can get those boats out of the area. So they just finished the polling. The launch team did get through the poll, and it appears the team is ready to go and pick up the count if we can get this issue resolved. So we're going to continue to monitor this, and we'll report back to you momentarily. Uh, as soon as we have the issue resolved. Again, we're at T-minus four minutes holding, and doesn't look like we'll be picking up the count as scheduled. So we're gonna stand by for more information. All stations be advised, we're, we will estimate a new T-0 based off range clear. Flight control. Flight control is no-go. Roger, LC4. Well, while we have a break in the launch countdown, we thought we'd take this opportunity to show you a video that we think is pretty impressive. It's all about launching rockets, something ILS and its partners do very well, setting the pace to launch success.
The Atlas program has a legacy of interesting and highly successful missions. Some of the earliest flights include Ranger, the first U.S. spacecraft sent to the moon. The Atlas launch vehicle was used by Project Mercury to carry Friendship 7 and John Glenn into orbit. And in 1958, the first communication from space was broadcast from an orbiting Atlas with a recorded Christmas message from President Eisenhower. Five lunar orbiters were launched in the late 1960s, photographing 99% of the moon's surface with excellent detail and resolution. These photographs were used for the selection of the Apollo moon landing sites. On November 28, 1971, an Atlas rocket carried Mariner 9, the first spacecraft to orbit another planet. It was able to map 85% of Mars and took the first pictures of its moons. Today, Atlas has launched satellites for direct-to-home broadcast services for customers all over the world, beginning with DirecTV in 1994. Since then, numerous direct broadcast satellites have been launched, including DirecTV, EchoStar's Dish Network satellites, Laurel Tempo in the United States, Eutelsat's Hotbird satellites, and Japan's Superbird. Over the past 40 years, Atlas rockets have launched hundreds of times, carrying scientific, military, and communications satellite cargoes. And at this time, we'll check back in once again with Don Spencer for an update. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding, and right now we're continuing to hold because of a range issue. We have boats that are two boats that are located in the downrange launch danger area, and they're working to clear those boats out of the area. We're hoping for some status, but we don't have an estimate at this time when the uh, boats will be cleared out. We do uh, expect that we'll be able to launch during our window this evening. We have a window that extends to 6.31 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So we're going to continue to stand by and monitor that issue. That is the only, uh, appears the only problem that we have in work. Otherwise, the launch vehicle is ready to go, and ground systems and spacecraft are all uh, ready. So uh, we'll continue to monitor this uh, one issue with a clearing the range area of the boats, and we'll uh, update you as soon as we have a new T-0 set. Um, we do have a COA that's coming up, so the first available opportunity uh, would be at six minutes past the hour. So we'll be coming up on some decision points here very soon. We'll update you in just a few moments. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus four minutes and holding. And now we'd like to show you some pictures from earlier today of the rollout of the rocket. R-16, heated and ambient purges are active. Roger. R-17, at this time, uh, booster hydraulics has not returned to standby pressure. Normally this would be done when 910 is recycled. Roger. And request permission to use option 469 to reset to standby. Standby. R14, booster pneumatic system recycle complete. Roger. Booster hydraulics, LC. Go ahead. Proceed. Roger. R-22, as guessed concentration levels acceptable. Roger. LC booster hydraulics on two. Delcy. I did reset uh, standby pressure. I can give you R17 booster hydraulics at standby pressure. Roger. Delcy. 
Go ahead. Roger, I can give you R11. Option 910 is a T-4 holding configuration. Also, R25, flight control system recycle tasks are complete. And R31, option 910, GLS is go. Roger. LC, red line monitor. Go ahead. Red line monitor event table has recycled to the correct configuration for terminal count. Roger, all systems. All systems recycle to page 91. T minus four and holding status check. Stand by for new T zero. We have some very important and excited guests with us today at the ASOC awaiting this historic launch. The Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle, or EELV program, of which the Atlas V rocket is a part of, meets new aerospace industry objectives, one of which is to enhance the competitiveness of the United States in the international launch market. Objectives such as building a safe and reliable launch system, reducing overall program costs, increasing service value, and having the least impact on the environment. The RD-180 met these objectives as being cost-effective, proven technology, which is also more environmentally friendly. The RD-180 already has a proven track record, powering three successful Atlas III launches and the inaugural Atlas V launch. The RD-180 is a throttleable booster engine fed by liquid oxygen and kerosene propellants. The Common Core booster concept came from the desire to build a family of launch vehicles that could address the entire range of current and future commercial and government satellites in an efficient and flexible manner. Using the Common Core booster and all the Atlas V variants helps accomplish this objective. Production of the booster is not dependent on which Atlas V it will fly on, making the manufacturing less sensitive to manifest changes and less costly. In addition, the relative simplicity of the CCB design as compared to previous Atlas boosters provides a higher flight reliability. The Common Core booster provides a straightforward solution to increase rocket performance by attaching solid rocket motors or SRMs. SRMs allow incremental performance increases to match customer spacecraft weight and mission requirements. For example, the Atlas V 401 model that is launching today with the 4-meter diameter payload fairing can add up to three SRMs to improve its performance from 4,950 kilograms to 7,640 kilograms to geosynchronous transfer orbit, or GTO. The Atlas V 100 series can accommodate up to five SRMs to raise its performance capability to 8,670 kilograms. And now let's check back in once again with launch commentator Don Spencer in Atlas Mission Control. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus four minutes and holding. Roger. And the launch director just gave us the final clear to launch. We're picking up the countdown momentarily here, and we can, are going to pick up the count for our liftoff at 6.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Mark. T minus four minutes and counting. And we're at T minus four minutes and counting. So the range issue was resolved and the boats were uh, chased out of the launch danger area. And we are counting, moving towards liftoff again at 6.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Hydraulics on the vehicle are at operational pressure. Three minutes, 30 seconds. Three minutes.
minus three minutes, 15 seconds. The team is securing booster, liquid oxygen topping, and going to flight pressure. Booster tanks to flight pressure. FTS internal. Flight termination system is switched to internal. The booster and Centaur vehicles will be switched from ground facility power to internal battery power in a few moments. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds. Minus two minutes. Vehicle internal. Launch sequence or start. One minute, 50 seconds. Securing center LO, LH2. Securing center LO2. One minute, 40 seconds. Launch enabled. Topping of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen on the launch vehicle is now completed. FTS arm. Orca's arm. One minute, 20 seconds. SCS count started. T-minus 60 seconds. Minus 40 seconds. Stable at step three. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Atlas 5. Minus 29. Vent valve's locked. Minus 20. This is Atlas Mission Control, a T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Atlas engine ignition, zero, and liftoff of the Lockheed Martin Atlas V rocket carrying the first satellite for the countries of Greece and Cyprus. Let's listen now to Rob Gannon as he provides launch vehicle ascent data from the ASOC Engineering Operations Center here at Cape Canaveral. Parameters continue to look just fine. Operating right where we expect to see them. And the engine continues to work just fine. Everything's looking good. Now I'm 90 seconds into it, passing through max Q. And 
everything looks good. We are now starting our 95% thrust throttle phase. Engine did uh, adjust the throttle setting as expected. Everything looks good. And vehicle rates continue to look good. Smoothing out after max Q. Expect to be activating steering in approximately 10 seconds. Engine operating normally. Everything looks good. And we have steering enabled right on time. Rates look good. Next event we're looking for is firing the power, and we have fired the pyro valve. Loop pressures in the Centaur Reaction Control System are coming up as expected. And we continue to accelerate. Next event we are looking for is starting our constant 5G throttle segment. We are now running a little over 3Gs. Everything looks good. The vehicle is 30 nautical miles in altitude. 53 miles downrange, traveling at 5,200 miles per hour. Vehicle rates continue to look good, nice and smooth. Engine continues to control normally, accelerating now at uh, 3.8 Gs. We continue to look good this far into the mission. And everything looks good. Accelerating normally. And we have boost phase chill down starting. And we are now holding a constant 5G throttle segment. Everything looks good there. Coming up on shutdown. We have stop boost phase chill down. And Biko. Booster engine has shut down normally. Everything looks good. We have stage separation. Everything looking good there. We have pre start on fuel and locks. Everything is looking good thus far. And we have full thrust. The main engine on Centaur is up and running normal. Good start signature coming up on fairing separation. And we have fairing separation. Both brake wires indicate a good fairing sep. Centaur engine continues to operate normally. Everything looking good. Chamber pressure is right where we expect to see it. RCS system activity is looking good. We are now 98 miles in altitude. 346 miles downrange, traveling at 11,300 miles per hour. Taking a quick look at the range track, the vehicle is continuing to operate right down the center of the range track. Everything is looking good. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus uh, or T plus uh, five minutes, 33 seconds, and counting. And everything is going very well with the flight. We had a very nominal booster engine cutoff, and uh, the uh, Atlas separated from the Centaur vehicle. And main engine start number one uh, occurred, and the Centaur first burn is underway. It's uh, about a nine minute Centaur first burn, and the vehicle is performing. As expected so far, we've had a great flight. Um, the Biko event occurred within about one second of nominal, uh, or one second of the predicted, and very nominal uh, booster phase uh, performance. And the uh, Centaur, as we mentioned, uh, also uh, is performing as expected. The uh, mission is continuing as planned. We had a liftoff at 6.10 p.m. Eastern Time, and we'll continue to update you on the mission as it continues. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 6 minutes, 25 seconds. And continue to make a fuel correction on Centaur PU. We do expect to uh, be doing a format change uh, any moment now. And we 
have a loss of data format change. We have reacquired data. Everything is operating what we expect to see it. Engine and operating parameters are continue to look good. Continue to make our fuel correction on Centaur PU. Hydrazine line temps are looking good, reacting to our thermal conditioning firings uh, for that system. Everything looks good. Mm -hmm. And vehicle rates continue to look good right down the middle. Very little disturbances. <laughs> Review tank pressures look good, battery bus uh, voltages look good, and seeing normal RCS thruster activity, everything looks fine. And the vehicle continues right down the center of the range track, everything is operating normally. We are now 1,000 miles down range, traveling at 12,700 miles per hour. Engine parameters continue to be right where we expect to see them. Then you see a nice smooth flight. Everything looks good. And PU system is now operating uh, very close to a nominal mixture ratio. Uh, correction down towards the lock side, making a minor lock correction. Uh, our oxidizer air signal is uh, very close to uh, zero. System is operating as expected. We continue to see a nice smooth acceleration on the vehicle, a little over half a G. And turn to look at the vehicle body rates. We are seeing very small disturbances on the vehicle. Everything looks good. Acceleration continues to be good right around half a G. And the center main engine and hydrogen system continue to operate normally. We are now 1,350 miles down range, traveling at 13,800 miles per hour. Continuing to be right, right down the center of the range track. Continues to be a perfectly nominal mission so far. look at mark event times up to this point in the mission show us to be right on within one second of nominals. Everything looks good. And the engine operating parameters continue to be uh, stable and at the appropriate levels. Tank pressures look good. Battery and bus voltages look good. Vehicle is continuing to operate uh, in a very nominal manner. Rates are right down the middle. And continue to see good AGCs on the FTS receivers. Data quality is excellent. Very few dropouts. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. The uh, PU system is uh, working as it's supposed to. Center PU now continues to operate near nominal. It's a good signature there. And 
Engine operating parameters look good. We are now 700 seconds into the mission. We expect to have Miko uh, just shy of 900, so we are uh, a little over three minutes to Miko 1, and everything continues to look normal. Nice clean data, good signatures on the engines and hydrazine system. Vehicle rates look good. PU systems are operating normally, and good temperatures on the hydrazine lines. Rates are nice and smooth as we are now approaching uh, 2,000 miles downrange at uh, 15,900 miles per hour. And we're about 50 seconds from our expected point of safety in the FTS system. Just prior to going orbital, engine continues to operate normally. PU is controlling your nominal MR. Everything looks good there. Hydrogen line temps are right up where we expect to see them, very close to bottle temp. Small numbers on our PU error signal. Everything looks good. And we have safety the FTS system right on time. Vehicle continues right down the center of the range track. Fifty seconds to Miko One. Engine is operating normally. Everything looks good. Thirty seconds to Miko One. Everything looks good. And nice smooth steady acceleration at uh, 0.85 G's. Engine operating parameters look good. Ten seconds. We have Miko. Early shutdown of Miko One, consistent with the high-performing booster stage. Shutdown signatures look good. We are now in a nominal nine-minute coast duration. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 15 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. And we are in the coast phase. We just entered a nine minute coast. And we uh, have had an excellent vehicle performance so far. The uh, uh, booster uh, separated uh, as planned and sent our upper stage uh, performed as planned through its first burn. And as I mentioned, we're in the beginning of a coast phase. Uh, everything's looking very uh, good with the mission so far. Our vehicle performance has been excellent and we'll continue to update you towards the end of the coast phase as we approach main engine start number two. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 15 minutes, 47 seconds, and counting. Welcome back to the Atlas V broadcast studio at the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. I'm Jennifer Barbie. As you are aware, we had a spectacular late afternoon liftoff of an Atlas V rocket just about 15 minutes ago from Launch Complex 41. This is the second launch of the Atlas V rocket and the second ILS mission of the year. Now to recap the events leading up to the liftoff. The weather was picture perfect here in Florida with no constraints or concerns from the launch meteorologist. The Atlas V rocket performed as expected throughout the launch countdown. There was also a blessing of the rocket. It was the tradition of the ancient Greeks to bestow a blessing on a departing vessel for good luck, and this mission was no exception. 
on board Helisat, a high-powered satellite that is designed to deliver voice, internet, video, and broadcasting to Greece, Cyprus, the Balkans, and Eastern Europe. We are delighted to say that we have many distinguished and happy guests here today from around the world. On that note, you can certainly feel the excitement in the air and the celebrations are just beginning. The Atlas launch team has much to be proud of, not only with today's successful launch, but also with some important aerospace industry recognition recently. On April 7, 2003, the Atlas V team was awarded the prestigious Annual Space Achievement Award for its accomplishment under the Air Force Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle Program. Accepting the award for the Atlas V EELV team was Air Force General Lance Lord and Dr. Mark Albrecht, President of International Launch Services. I want to thank Elliot for the whole uh, team at the Space Foundation for this uh, award tonight. And I accept it humbly on behalf of the thousands of uh, men and women in the United States Air Force and certainly these two great contractor teams for their commitment to uh, making sure that we had mission assurance with assured access to space. And I say that uh, with uh, utmost appreciation for Lieutenant General Brian Arnold and Sue Mashinko, or Colonel Sue Mashinko, our program manager, and all the men and women who work in uh, the Space and Missile Systems Center for all their hard work. And all those folks in Washington and the air staff uh, that have been part of the Air Force team to make sure that we could uh, deliver the product. And most off, uh, I'd like to say thanks to these two great contractor uh, teams for their great work. Thank you very much for this award, and we will display it proudly and will uh, continue to guide us on our shared access to space. Thank you. From the team in Denver to San Diego to Harlingen to Cape Canaveral, our partners at Nergamosh in Moscow, uh, I accept this award in their behalf as an outstanding uh, example of engineering and a great partnership, a unique partnership between the Air Force and industry. We were able to bring this vehicle to a first flight in August of 2002 in just over four years, a remarkable achievement to the dedication of the people on the Air Force you mentioned, the SMC team were indebted to as well, plus uh, the incredible engineering prowess of the Atlas team, which goes all the way back to the first flight of John Glenn. It's a very proud bird. This was an extraordinary achievement for the team and the country, and we're delighted to receive this award. And on behalf of them, I'm humbly uh, able to thank you for receiving it. Thank you. Now let's head up to the customer support area where Mr. Chris Christodoulos Protopata, CEO of Helisat Consortium Limited, is standing by with a very excited group of people. Mr. Protopapas, thank you for joining us. What can you tell us about what this satellite means to Greece and Cyprus? This satellite enters uh, Greece and Cyprus in the club of the countries that they have presence in space. Uh, the satellite is a work of a 10-year work between the two countries, and today this uh, dream is reality. I have to thank you, the two governments, the co government of Cyprus and the co government of Greece, for their support, and also the um, chairman and the board of directors of OTE, the Hellenic Telecommunications Organizations, for their great support for this project. And also all the team, the team of Helasat, the team of ILS, and the team of Astrium for their great work. We started uh, eight months ago, and in eight months, we have uh, delivered a spacecraft in the space. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mr. Protopapas, CEO of Helasat Consortium Limited. Well, we are only a few minutes away from some of the final events in this first phase of the mission. You've heard a lot about Helisat. Now we would like to tell you a little more about Astrium, one of the world's leading satellite manufacturers. Astrium offers flexibility and an ability to adapt to the needs of its customers. Here's more in this short video. <laughs> With considerable expertise in satellite-based communication systems, Astrium is able to tailor satellite design to specific mission requirements in close cooperation with its clients. 
One of the key factors for the success of this program has been our ability to well understand the specific need of our customer, Elasat, and to provide an adequate solution for this need. And I think it has been the case in most of the areas of this program. At technical level, for instance, since the beginning, they have identified some business opportunity linked to the perspective of the Olympic Games. Knowing that, we have been able to implement on the satellite quite interesting feature in terms of coverage, in terms of interconnectivity, in terms of performance, so that they have now the capability to make this opportunity effective. Astrium's Eurostar satellites have established a remarkable record for reliability and quality of service since their introduction in 1990. Total control of the design cycle and the building process with constant monitoring is the key to the success of the Eurostar series. Astrium has total system capability for both spacecraft and the communications payload. The LASAT has a specific constraint coming from the ITU regulation. They need absolutely to have the satellite in orbit before mid of uh, April. We have started this program in July 2002 and uh, knowing this constraint, we have been able to develop the satellite in just less than uh, eight months. Satellite being ready today for the launch and uh, Astrium is quite proud of this success. Astrium can also supply the satellite and control center for clients with operator training services. On completion of in-orbit tests, Astrium continues to monitor satellites in orbit. As we approach another key milestone in the mission, let's check in once again with launch commentator Don Spencer. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 23 minutes, 47 seconds, and we're coming up uh, momentarily on main engine start number two. We have ignition at full thrust. The engine is up and running normally. Acceleration levels look good. Start transient looks good. And we just had Centaur main engine start number two, and this burn will last for about a little over four minutes. Um, we'll have MECO 2 at 28 minutes, 22 seconds into the flight, and spacecraft separation at 31 minutes, 11 seconds in the flight. So we're about seven minutes away from spacecraft separation. The vehicle performance has been uh, as planned so far. The vehicle, again, is performing uh, as expected. Right now it's about 5,200 miles downrange from Cape Canaveral, and its altitude is 161 miles, um, and it's at about... Um, and PU is now moving. The velocity is about uh, eighteen thousand six hundred miles an hour at this time. So let's listen in to Rob Gannon as the mission continues. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus twenty-four minutes, forty-eight seconds and counting. Just shy of seventeen hundred seconds into the mission. A little over two hundred seconds from now. Everything is looking good. The engine is operating normally. Hydrogen line temps look. With the Atlas launch facility situated here at Cape Canaveral and the Proton launch facilities at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, there has been a remarkable combined launch rate of 46 Proton and Atlas launches over 36 months. With the mutual sustained backup capability of the Atlas and Proton programs, ILS is uniquely positioned to ensure its customers a launch when and where they need one. Here's more about what the International Launch Services team refers to as schedule assurance. Versatility and reliability, the key words in today's launch environment. At International Launch Services, our reliability and versatility come from two of the most recognized families of launch vehicles, Atlas and Proton. Proven leaders over more than four decades of placing satellites into orbit and able to provide launch capabilities from half a world apart. That is unmatched versatility. From Cape Canaveral on America's east coast in Florida to Baikonur in the interior of Kazakhstan, ILS is the only launch service provider with a dual backup capability to ensure customers of launches when they need them. The range of configurations in our launch vehicle fleet allows us to launch payloads in every weight class. 
and the experience accumulated over more than 40 years of evolutionary launch vehicle development has created a truly enviable launch success story. The Proton has been the primary heavy lift vehicle for Russian unmanned programs since the mid-60s. Over 290 launches with an outstanding reliability record. Since the first Atlas launch in 1957, there have been more than 570 flights with a success rate that has made Atlas one of the premier launch systems in the world. It is the only launch system with continuous first flight mission success history, six for six in only 12 years. And Atlas was the launch vehicle that carried astronaut John Glenn into America's first manned orbital flight. Here at ILS, success means exceeding expectations. Time after time, Atlas and Proton launch vehicles have been on the money, delivering their payloads with precision accuracy. For our customers, that means extended lifetime for satellites and increased revenue opportunities. But nothing tells the story better than the people who believe in us. We have a contract backlog of some 30 launches, and we intend to remain the leader in the business of placing communication satellites into orbit. We are ILS, International Launch Services. We are nearing the final moments of this phase of the Helisat mission. Let's check in one last time with our launch commentator, Don Spencer, who is monitoring the progress from the Atlas Launch Control Center. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 28 minutes, 14 seconds, and counting. And we should have uh, Miko 2 here at any moment. We're going to. Sure looks good. And we just nice had Miko 2. Centaur main engine off. cutoff number schedule. 2. We're going to coast here shortly. The uh, team, team confirmed shutdown of the Centaur upper stage. Uh, the vehicle is now starting in alignment in preparation to begin uh, a rotational spin that will stabilize the spacecraft prior to separation. Spacecraft separation and is planned for L plus 31 minutes, 11 seconds. We're at L plus 28 minutes and 47 seconds right now, so just a couple minutes away from spacecraft separation. Let's stand by and, and listen in as Rob Ginn continues to call the launch. And pitch and roll as we swing around to achieve that proper attitude. Approximately two minutes to spacecraft set. Hello. Quick look at mark event time, so in your nominal second burn duration, vehicle rates are smoothing out, indicating we've achieved a proper attitude for separation. This is Atlas Mission Control at all plus 30 Back minutes, 13 minute seconds. Spacecraft set. Everything is looking just fine. And uh, as you heard Rob say, we're about a minute away from spacecraft separation. That's uh, coming up momentarily. We're looking at preliminary orbit data, and the orbit looks fantastic. We're very close to the orbit we anticipated here for the flight. And for those of you watching the broadcast, you're continuing to watch satellite toolkit Three imagery. To spacecraft separation. Which vehicle rates are down to zero. We are stable in preparation for set. Moments away from spacecraft separation. 20 seconds to set. Ten seconds. We have spacecraft separation. Both brake wires indicate a normal separation. Everything looks good. 
taking a quick look at orbital parameters. Congratulations to the entire Atlas team and to our customer, Helisat. The uh, launch team is confirmed. We have spacecraft separation. You heard the applause break out here at the uh, ASOC, and International Launch Services and Lockheed Martin are very pleased to provide Helisat with a successful launch. This is Atlas Mission Control. And we are honored to be joined here in the studio with Mr. Manolis Stratakis, the Deputy Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications for Greece, who is accompanied by his interpreter. Mr. Stratakis, can you share with us what the importance of today's launch of Helisat means to your government and the country of Greece? This means for Greece that uh, Greece is entering today the club of the space nations. Uh, Greece, the Greek government fully committed uh, to the uh, to the commitments of the Prime Minister, Mr. Simitis. Fulfills one by one all its commitments, and which one of them is the uh, launch of the Hellenic uh, of the Hellasat. Ο πρώτος ελληνικός δορυφόρος θα δώσει τη δυνατότητα της αξιοποίησης των νέων τεχνολογιών από την Ελλάδα και τον ελληνισμό που γίνει. Uh, the first uh, Greek satellite, Hellasat, uh, uh, will, uh, will be used uh, to uh, cover and to serve uh, the Greek nation as well as all the Greeks living abroad. Θα δώσει τη δυνατότητα στην Ελλάδα να αξιοποιήσει τη θέση της και τον ρόλο της στην Νοτιοανατολική Ευρώπη. Will give Greece uh, the opportunity uh, to fully exploit uh, its position uh, to uh, Eastern uh, Europe as well as the entire world. Με αποτέλεσμα να αξιοποιηθούν όλα τα πλεονεκτήματα των νέων τεχνολογιών από όλους από όλες τις κοινωνικές ομάδες που μέχρι σήμερα δεν είχαν τη δυνατότητα να τις κατακτήσουν. With the result uh, resulting to the uh, uh, resulting to the uh, <laughs> uh, resulting to uh, the full capabilities uh, of uh, such a system to serve uh, not only the Greek nation as well as the uh, entire international community. We have full. Uh, we are. Uh, happy and uh, very proud, especially those of us that uh, we have uh, been today at Canaveral, and we lived moment for moment these, uh, uh, these moments. And with the opportunity to thank all the and uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody involved uh, in uh, making uh, this come through and make it a reality. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Shatakis, we thank you very much for taking the time to join us and we congratulate you and your countrymen on this accomplishment. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to go back once again to Don Spencer and Atlas Mission Control for a launch update. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 35 minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, we had an excellent flight this evening. Um, as you heard, uh, our folks from uh, our customer, Helisat, talking about the mission. They're uh, thrilled to join the club of spacefaring nations. They now have their first satellite on orbit. Uh, Helisat is, uh, this spacecraft is for Greece and Cyprus, and the satellite will be used to support the 2004 Olympics. So uh, a very proud moment for those countries, and we're very proud to be part of that. Of course, the Atlas name is part of the uh, 
uh, Greek uh, history and uh, is a legendary figure in Greek history. So we're very pleased that they joined the Atlas team for this mission. And we're very pleased that uh, the mission is completed successfully. We did have uh, just a few minutes of delay getting off the pad due to a range uh, issue, but otherwise the vehicle uh, performance through the countdown was excellent and the flight performance was excellent. Looking at the orbit data, we have an apogee altitude of 85,457 kilometers, which is very close within uh, just, uh, just a few kilometers of what we anticipated to be at for the apogee altitude for the mission. Perigee altitude is at 312.22 kilometers. We expect it to be at 312.2, so we hit the perigee right on the numbers. Inclination is at 17.06 17 degrees which is exactly as anticipated. So a uh, very excited team here. In just a few moments, we're going to hear from Dr. Mark Albrecht and several of our distinguished guests from Hellasat, and we're looking forward to hearing just a few more comments from them momentarily, so we ask you stand by. And uh, as we mentioned, uh, a very excited team here. You heard the applause break out at the uh, ASOC with the uh, management team here right next door. Uh, thrilled to have this mission complete, and, and uh, there was uh, a lot of applause there. Um, this is just the second Atlas V mission. Uh, Atlas V is uh, a major program for Lockheed Martin, and um, this is a major milestone for that program. And for you watching the live broadcast, we're going to run a replay of this launch. It was a beautiful day in a spectacular blue sky with no clouds and really a magnificent looking launch. So we're going to let you take another look at that while we stand by for just a few moments to hear from Three, our, uh, two, our one, guests. That was engine ignition, zero, and liftoff of the Lockheed Martin Atlas V rocket carrying the first satellite for the countries of Greece and Cyprus. Let's listen now to Rob Gannon as he provides launch vehicle ascent data from the ASOC Engineering Operations Center here at Cape Canaveral. Good. I'm 90 seconds into it, passing through max Q. And everything looks good. We are now starting our 95% thrust throttle phase. Engine did uh, adjust the throttle setting as expected. Everything looks good. And vehicle rates continue to look good. Smoothing out after max Q. Expect to be activating steering in approximately 10 seconds. Engine operating normally. Everything looks good. And we have steering enabled right on time. Rates look good. Next event we're looking for is firing the pyro, and we have fired the pyro valve. Loop pressures in the central reaction control system are coming up as expected. Now we would like to take you to the floor of the launch control center here at the ASOC for comments from ILS President Dr. Mark Albrecht as he congratulates the launch team as well as members of Helisat and Astrium. 
I'm Mark Albrecht, President of International Launch Services, and the first thing I'd like to say is congratulations to the Atlas team, the Atlas V team. 65 out of 65, the world's most reliable launch system, has proven itself one more time. Congratulations to the Atlas team. You guys continue to make this look easy, and we know it's hard. Second, we'd like to uh, congratulate our customer, Helisat Corporation, and uh, congratulations on a wonderful flight. You're in orbit. Thank you very much. This project has been in uh, plan for almost 10 years, and today is a successful launch and on-orbit performance, and very soon, hopefully, we'll get the word about the health of the satellite, and I would like to turn it over to Mr. George Argyropoulos, who's the chairman and general manager of Helisat SA and the chief technical officer of OTE Group. Mr. Argyropoulos. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you very much, all the team, for the effort and for the successful launch. Uh, I, would, I would like to say to you that uh, it is a great moment for my country as far as it is the first Greek and Cyprian satellite for my company OTE, Hellenic Telecommunication Organization, which is the main shareholder of Elasat companies and also from Elasat, but also I would like to express uh, many thanks from myself as an engineer because as perhaps you know uh, all the telecommunication engineers they have a dream to be in a position like this I am today and that's why I thank you for all these reasons and uh, I wish to you and to, to your company uh, good success in the future. Thank you very much. I'd now like to introduce our customer, Mr. Protopapas, Managing Director of Helisat Consortium Limited. From my side, I would like to thank you very much, all of you, for your great work. Uh, I would like to thank also uh, the Hellenic Telecommunications Organization, our main shareholder, and especially Mr. Argyropoulos, who was the supporter and great supporter of this program from the Hellenic Telecommunication Organization. I would like to thank you also very much uh, the program manager of Astrium, Mr. Philippe Lebois, uh, the program manager of ILS, Jim Bonner, and uh, our program manager, Dr. Christagis Felas, who is now in the control room upstairs, and uh, I would like also to congratulate you for your great work. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we hope to cooperate again. Last but not least, the man who's still nervous, uh, Mr. Jean-Michel Lobaton, who is the president of telecommunication satellite at Astrium. Jean-Michel. Thank you, Mark. Well. I would like first to congratulate very much the ILS Atlas V team for a beautiful launch that you have offered to us tonight. I would also like to congratulate uh, ELASAT and OT for the performance of putting a satellite in orbit eight months after signature of the contract. It's not every day <laughs> that we do that, and believe me, without the pragmatism of the ELASAT project team, we would not be there. I would like also to congratulate the Astrium project team for having delivered in eight months. And for us, as Mark just mentioned, the work just starts again, uh, and we will work hard in order to put the satellite in its right position in the next 10 days and to hand it over to you by the 12th of June. So thank you very much, all of you, and once again, congratulations. It was purely beautiful. And finally, I'd just like the to take the, the, day. the hero of the day. I'd like to take an opportunity to congratulate <laughs> Dr. Chris Fellas. Dr. Dr. Fellas. Dr. Fellas. The, the, uh, oh my. <laughs> the, uh, the Atlas team, Mike Gass, Jim Sponick, John Karras, 
Ted Gavrilis, part of our team, our, our Greek American team that are very proud. And I don't think it's much of an overstatement to simply say that uh, with this, we are opening, opening officially the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, Greece. I'd like to apologize for being late. I, I had to stay behind to get the results of the, of the launch. It's spot on. I cannot say anymore. It's perfect. Perfect. It's, it's giving us another two years in orbit, I estimate, of life. Yeah. Greece now has a satellite. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, today we witnessed history as the Atlas V lit up the sky like an Olympic flame, carrying on its shoulders the first communication satellite for the countries of Greece and Cyprus. I would like to thank our launch commentator, Don Spencer, and all of our special guests from Helisat, Astrium, Lockheed Martin, and the ILS team for insight into today's launch activities. The next ILS launch is scheduled for May 20th from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with the launch of a proton rocket carrying the AMC-9 satellite. For more information on the Atlas V or ILS launches, please visit our website at www.ilslaunch.com. Until next time, I'm Jennifer Barbie bidding you farewell on behalf of the Atlas V team here at Cape Canaveral, Florida, and our partners and customers worldwide. We'll leave you with one final look of the flight of the Helisat spacecraft aboard the Atlas V launch vehicle. Have a good night.